I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Today I want to share with you my Savoy cabbage. Now this is the first time I've grown Savoy cabbage, so we're going to harvest a cabbage, we're going to try a recipe, and we're going to prepare to save seeds. I planted my Savoy cabbage, that the, the seeds I got from my gardener friend Sumi. On 10-26, I seeded them out in trays. By December the 7th, I had potted them up and they were soaking in a rare rain shower. They didn't really take off. As an afterthought, I just stuck them in my back 40 bed. By February 10th, they looked like this. One of the nine plants went in the celery bed in the parkway. And by February 20th, it had filled the space. After the rainstorm of March 1st, it took off. My back 40 is absolutely loaded with chard, radishes, beets. Look at the size of these Savoy cabbage leaves. They're huge and they lay right on the ground and the sow bugs love to just hide under there and eat away. When you look underneath these big leaves, the one that's just laying on the ground, they're just a food source for roly-polies. It's actually not a bug, it's a crustacean. Even with all those legs, it can't turn itself over. But these guys will chew the surface off your melons. If they're laying on the ground, they'll eat your strawberries. They'll eat any tasty leaves that are laying on the ground. I'm sure they do a service to the uh, biodynamic, biodiversity nature of the soil, though. It's just annoying. Because I planted five Savoy cabbages in this bed, the entire bed is hostage, held hostage with the red netting. Just keep your brassicas all in one place and put the netting on them because the bugs seem to leave the beets and the chard alone. This Savoy cabbage I discovered has aphids. So does another one. Okay, for those of you who are not born farmers <laughs> and get up at the crack of dawn, if you're gardening, it's a really good idea to come out before the sun comes up and see how many of these monsters are munching on your plants. This one, it's his or her unlucky day. This is a brown snail, and I actually bought some decollet snails that are predators to brown snails. Now, this is kind of a large one. I don't know if it would go after this, but in this case, this one's just going to be dispensed of. And I have netting on here to protect from cabbage moth, but these florets have pushed through the netting but I thought at this point, it's so huge, why not let this entire thing turn to yellow blossoms? It'll, if it'll just warm up for the bees. Bees aren't the only beneficials frequenting the blooms. Hoverflies are regular visitors. I'm glad this did bolt because I never would have imagined what would have sprouted out of a cabbage plant. It's magnificent and wonderful food for the bees. Six days later, the flower tower had fallen, bees dove for pollen, hoverflies supped, aphids had appeared by the millions, and surfed fly larvae vacuumed them up. My second Savoy cabbage was ripe, the blooming cabbage got pulled to dig for a pipe. Pods were not developed enough to save seeds, but into my planting bed, I layered all the leaves. If you enjoy this episode, please share it with your friends. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching, see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode, please, let's see. What shall I have you do? Um, <laughs> because I never would imagine. I'm glad this did bolt because I never <sighs> powdered my nose. Whoa! <laughs> Yeehaw! That's big. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Okay.
One second. 